the tendency uh, that people have when they start jumping cliffs and which I had is to go slow onto the cliff and just let yourself drop and the problem when you do that is that you're gonna land right at the bottom of the cliff so first of all you're gonna get more impact and second of all there might be more rocks there and you don't see your landing so the lesson I learned through the years is that the faster I would go on the cliff the more I could ollie before the nose of the cliff so that would first of all allow me to avoid all the kind of rocky uh, things that could be at the end of the cliff and also it would give me a much better transition onto, onto the ground for the landing. So as you can see from the top it's really difficult to see what's underneath the cliff and if you're gonna go and jump it with low speed there's good chances that you're gonna land really close to the cliff and you might potentially hit more rocks. All right let's fucking do this all right speed <laughs> One important thing also is to be really set on the direction that you're going to be taking. But basically you could use maybe a wind leap or a rock that's after or before, which would give you the direction. And sometimes you, you, you would have to be really precise. If it's steep and exposed and you don't want to catch too much speed, one way to do it is to kind of jump sideways, let yourself fall and kind of butt check, slash, back slap, kind of. So it's basically kind of landing on your side, controlling your speed and then keep going. In competitions, it's quite badly sanctioned, but I think in some ways, I think it's a very legit way uh, to jump a cliff as long as it's in the right uh, environment. Being able to drop a cliff with confidence will allow your line to flow and it will also open up so many options in the mountains.